I'm getting ready to show you a demonstration of configuring a router. The router that I have here in the studio is a Linksys router. It's an 802.11g. Fairly straightforward router that has on the back side four Ethernet ports that are in close proximity with the RJ45 connector, plus a fifth port that is separated away from the other four. Now to configure this router, I have taken a straight through RJ45 Ethernet cable, that's an unshielded twisted pair cable, and I've plugged it into one of those four ports, and then I've also plugged it into the back of the laptop. When you purchase a router, it comes with a CD. The CD is going to walk you through the process of configuring that router. You would hook it up just as I described with the Ethernet cable that comes with the router between your computer and the back of the router in one of those four ports. Then you run the software and it walks you through the configuration process and it helps you change a number of the things I'm getting ready to show you in a manual fashion. I've seen a number of the CD utilities, many of them are very helpful, and most of them go through all of the things that you do want to change. In some cases, I've heard of folks having problems where what they were trying to do didn't work, so I've shown them the manual way of doing it, and that's exactly what we're doing right here. I have launched Internet Explorer because I'm going to use the web browser, Microsoft's Internet Explorer, to go down that Ethernet cable into the back of the router, and I'm going to be running some software that is in that router on a firmware chip. To get to that router and run that software, I start by giving the numeric address that represents that router. Now we're going to talk about TCP IP a little later in this presentation over the Network Plus class, and you'll understand that numbering system then. Most routers have either documentation that comes with them or a label on the underside that gives you that number of the router. At this point, when I hit the Enter key, I'm now looking at software inside the router instead of running the CD, and this will give me a much more versatile manual form of configuration. For the Linksys, the login is the username of admin, and the password by default is also A-D-M-I-N, admin admin. Well, that's not very secure. So one of the first things that I would do for my router would be to change that admin's password. Now notice over here under the administration tab, and these are all different tabs, Across the top, we're going to come back and look at some of these tabs here a little bit later, but on the administration tab, when I do a left click is where I can change the password. Now this is the password that lets me enter this utility inside the router. I'm going to show you something a little bit later called a security key, and that's what you would use if you want your wireless laptop to connect to the router for internet access. But this is a management password, and I'm going to change my password here. Obviously, that doesn't spell admin. It spells dot, 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 dot. Now, one of the things that you'll notice in most routers, you typically need to make one change at a time. Come down here to the bottom and click on Save Settings. It's actually rebooting the router. And now if I type in A-D-M-I-N and click OK, I'm not going anywhere. For security reasons, I encourage you to change the admin password on your router. Whoops, I can't type. There you go, maybe that'll work. Ha, I'm back in with the password. Here's the second thing that I recommend you do. I'm going to go over to the wireless tab here on this Linksys router. And under the wireless tab is where I can change the SID. The service set identification is also called the network name. Now, if you happen to be traveling just about anywhere, you will see the name of routers, and some occasions, especially people who have purchased a router for the first time, they will leave their router to the default name. Sometimes it's the word Linksys, sometimes it's Netgear, sometimes it's just the word default. Well, for what we're doing, let's say I make this the Network Plus. That's the name of my router. Right above it is the Network Mode, and I could choose between Mixed, which is the default, which would support some of the legacy 802.11b wireless laptops, as well as the G. I'm going to leave it at mixed, even though I know for a fact that the laptop that I have here and most all laptops are G. You could choose to do just one or the other. One other thing we talked about in the presentation was the concept of channels. Here is channel 6, 1, 6, and 11, 
where the channels that I told you would be the channels that you might choose so you don't have any kind of overlap. Now what I've done is I have changed the name of the router, I've changed the channel, and all I've done so far is put a password on this router for me to manage it, but I have not yet made the router secure. I'm doing that on purpose because I want to show you how it appears in a utility that I'm going to use in just a moment. Changing the name and the channel is all I've done so far. Let's save the settings. Successfully save settings. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this. The laptop that I have here is a Dell laptop. Dells are fairly prevalent out there and a lot of times you'll see Dells have this utility. I'm going to run this utility to do some of my demonstration and then I'm going to disable this utility a little bit later and show you the standard Windows utility. If you have an IBM, they have their own utility. Acer's, Toshiba's, a lot of different brand names will have their own utility. This one is very visual and notice it shows there is huh, Linksys. I thought I made it Network Plus. So I'm going to click on the refresh button. Ah, there we go. There's the name that I changed. But you can tell that it is not, I repeat, not secure. It doesn't have a lock like this company does. With that router name there, I could simply left click on the router name, click Next, and connect to it. Now how do I know that I'm connected to it? Later in our presentation on the Network Plus class, one of the utilities I'm going to teach you is a command called ipconfig, and it stands for the IP, which is the Internet Protocol, configuration. I'm going to go ahead and run the command line, and I'm going to type in IP con whoops, I hit space. IP config. And there it is. My wireless adapter has indeed received a TCP IP address from that wireless router. And that's a good thing. Down here in the bottom right hand corner is that little symbol which looks like a computer with a couple of little, looks like three little half circles, little white wavelengths beside it. And it says I connected to the network plus at 54 megabits per second. It's an excellent strong connection because literally it's right beside me. Okay, let's take this one step further. I'm going to go back to Internet Explorer.